did not do a vlog or a video on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's been a few days. I've been extremely busy. I know people keep saying, well, you always say you've been busy. Well, I stay busy. I do. Um, for instance, this is Thursday. Tomorrow, there's no way I'd be able to do a video. It's Friday and I have tons of Friday stuff I have to do. I'm going to have to get them. Now I got it. I have this one pair in my left right above my earlobe. I'll pluck it out and it's good for about three days and then it grows that long again. <laughs> I've got eyebrows do the same thing. Oh, the embarrassment of being old. Um, went to Walmart twice today. I had to go down to Ardmore, which is about oh, 28, 29 miles south of us to take care of some business with my oldest son, Bo. Then uh, we went to Walmart to put money on burner cards, and then we went to eat, and then we came home. And then when we came home, I uh, took my wife to Walmart to take care of some stuff she needed to take care of. I did something a little selfish yesterday. I had my son Brandon bring the refrigerator from in here. It's not what you'd cause call an apartment size fridge but it's a little bigger than a mini fridge and it has a freezer in it and I told my sweetheart we're going to have food in that for us because I'll buy stuff for my wife and I and everybody else in the house eats it well not everybody but uh, my two grandbabies Tigger and, and Zara Rose they definitely and their daddy admits they do. You can't keep Tigger out of stuff, nor do I really want to. He is so precious. His sister is precious. She's nine, I think, going on ten. I'm not sure that's how old she is, but I do know one thing. She's in a growth spurt right now, and every day I see her, and I'm not just saying this, every day she's prettier than she was the day before. And Linda saw her yesterday. My my youngest son brought uh, Benjamin and his kids back to the house, and she saw Zara Rose out by the car, and she thought it was our granddaughter Aurora, who's 20 years old and lives in Ardmore. But uh, well, I'm out of this stuff. It's called Boobly or Bubbly, I guess they sparkling water. This is strawberry sunset. It has no sugar in it, no calories. And I like it. I also like regular water, which I'm getting ready to pour into my uh, yeah, that's clean. I can tell there ain't no floaties in it. And, uh, I'm going to try to upload this off of my, my business computer. Try to. That's the operating word. There's only a few things I want to point out on this video. One, 
everyone has an addiction. They do. Uh, it just depends on what it is. All of us are addicted to breathing. And all of us are addicted to eating because we have to to live. And we're all of us are addicted to water. We have to drink water because most of our body is made up of water. It's how God made us. But I'm addicted to lemon drops. And I'm out. Linda is out. I went by Sooner Foods and they didn't have any. I haven't been to the Sooners in Sulphur and I really don't want to drive that far just to get some lemon drops. The gal that does the ordering at the one in uh, Davis said that uh, she had ordered some but there were none there. I made a point of stopping and looking. I did get some popsicles to go in the freezer on our fridge in the, in the parlor and uh, I bought some Werther's Original hard candy and that'll have to suffice. Um, it's not, it's just something that calms me down having a hard candy to suck on at night. And uh, lemon drops, I've had an addiction to lemon drops since I was a really small child, like seven or eight years old. My grandpa, Virgil Lance, who was a, a pastor and a barber, and at one time was a professional undefeated boxer, bare knuckles. That's how old he was. It was before they had gloves. And he, uh, he taught all of his daughters, all of them, how to fist fight, including my mother. But uh, Papa Virgil had a barber shop in Hilton, Oklahoma, and I would. Come, and he also had a second-hand store. And in that second hand store, when she first got married, my Aunt Dixie was married to a guy named Jimmy Green. And her name was Dixie Jean Green. You can believe that or not, but that was true. Now it's Dixie Lynn. But they lived in the back of that second hand store. There was an apartment there. But I'd come by after school when we lived in Hilton and walked by, and I'd walk to my grandpa's. Uh, barber shop and he would give me lemon drops. They were in little packets, about that tall little box and they cost a penny a box. Now that's going some back I know and that's how old I am. I'm not going to divulge it entirely but he'd give me that box and there's somebody trying to break into the computer I think someone breached my computer. I'll know in a minute when I'm done running a scan on it if they didn't. Um, the folks I used to work for are an intelligence agency and we have other agencies just pester us to no end even though we're all old, they pester us. And it's part of a urination contest to see who can pee the farthest and the most, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't make me any real difference. They're wasting their time. There's nothing classified in this office. I don't keep it in here. I keep it on something like that only I don't keep those in here. And they're in a place even my wife doesn't know about. But uh, getting back to it, I'm a lemon drop addict. I don't know what it is about it, but I, I love lemon drops. I love lemon icebox pie. I love lemon meringue pie. When my sweetheart and I go out to eat, and they put a wedge of lemon on the glass, I get the seeds out of it, and rather than squeezing that off into water, I eat it. I love lemons, everything about lemons. Don't really like limes, but I love lemons. But anyway, um, 
that's one thing I wanted to reveal to everyone on here so you know I'm a deep, dirty, dark secret. So I'm, a, I'm an addict, a lemon addict. I don't like lemonade though. I don't know why that's ever. What are you needing, son? I'm just, I'm on a set. I was trying not to interrupt you when you're done. Oh, I'm just doing my, my vlog. Now here's the second thing I'm going to talk about on this video and then I will I will uh, cease and desist on it. I have a lot of friends in real life and a lot of friends on Facebook that are a that are they're a political creature. They eat, drink, sleep and, and think politically. And that's really sad. I've alluded to it many times on this vlog that politics is derived from two Greek words, poly meaning many and ticks meaning blood blood sucking insects. Well that really and truly is how I look at it. In a about half of the fifty states come on in. I'm gonna interrupt them. No, you just take the stuff out of the chair. Take the stuff out of the chair there. I, uh, I, in about half of the 50 states, what happens is sheriffs are appointed by the governor of that state. It's not so in Texas. It's not so in most of the southern states, including Oklahoma. And so the sheriffs are politicians, and it shouldn't be that way. They, but they have to run the jail, they have to collect taxes, they have to serve warrants, they have to do all kinds of things. And so uh, it becomes a business, more or less. And most sheriffs in Oklahoma are not foot, feet on the ground cops police officers, their administrators. Now I worked for two sheriffs. I worked for uh, uh, Richard Sharp down in Jefferson County, Oklahoma. Worked for him for a couple of years and uh, he was he was a boots on the ground sheriff. He, he went out with his guys and uh, enforced the law. And I worked for uh, a guy named J.D. Smith up in Oklahoma City when he was the sheriff up there and he was a politician. So the and you know I've worked for a lot of different folks in law enforcement. Now what I'm getting to with this Something happened in Carter County, Oklahoma, which is south of us, about 20 minutes, that has never happened before, to my knowledge, ever. There were two candidates. I'm not going to name their names. If you want to look up Carter County, Oklahoma elections, you can. But the incumbent and the main challenger got exactly the same amount of vote votes, down to one vote. I mean exactly the same. I've never known that to happen ever. I tried calling my oldest adopted son, whose name I will not mention on here, he works down there, to ask him how what was going on. But he did not answer my phone call, and I think that's because he knew what it was about. You know, he's intuitive like that. But uh, that is curiosity I'm waiting to see the end result of. The other thing, there were two, two main candidates for the 4th Congressional District running for United States Senator in Oklahoma. Tom Cole and Paul Bondar. Paul Bondar moved here barely, expressly, probably so he could run for office. He, he bought 500 acres of land. He's got a house he's rented. He's got uh, 
a couple of mansions, one in Illinois and one in Texas. I think this guy is flitting around. He made his money, what money he has in real estate and insurance. And I think he flits around uh, trying to get into national politics. He's uh, about six foot something feet tall, obese, not a good looking guy at all. And I hate to say it this way, but politicians a lot of times by the average person out there are judged by their appearance. Paul Bondar's big bellied and kind of, uh, he's fat. And that has a tendency to turn voters off. If a guy is overweight like that, it usually means he doesn't control his appetites. I've never met the guy. I have met Tom Cole, and I'll be real blunt about it. I didn't vote for either one of them. I voted for the Native American candidate other than, uh, than uh, Tom Cole. But that's pretty much all I've got to say today. Now, I'll either load it on this computer or I won't. But uh, I want you to know, like the sign up there says, I would like you to be kind. Know that this cripple crazy old man loves you. And i got to get along, get along, little doggy. i got to get about my day, and so do you. God bless you, and bye.